Electrode's Hisuian form is a pretty big buff. While it didn't get any upgrades to stats, its base 150 speed is still one of the fastest in the game, and it has a decent power with its base 80 special attack. The addition of the grass typing is what truly makes this ball so much better. With this, Electrode is now no longer hardwalled by ground types, and instead destroys them with options like Leaf Storm plus its new move Chloroblast. This is a 150 power grass move that costs 50% of your health to use, and overall, Electrode's insane speed allows it to be faster than almost everything and can pivot for momentum with Volt Switch and blast things with Leaf Storm or Chloroblast. Alright, look, there's just something about a spherical dude who rolls real fast. I've always been an Electrode fan, and Hisuian Electrode is definitely an upgrade, and it's just super fun to use. Hey, why don't you go ahead and do me a favor, make sure that subscribe button says subscribed, and let's go ahead and get into the video. So my opponent leads off with the Gallade. My dude's got a sharp boy, I happen to have a nut who's a wall, and this is mostly just fine with me. I want to prioritize getting up my stealth rock here, but also I can take physical attacks all day and night from this thing. So I'm totally fine with this, I do decide to just go for that stealth rock turn one, as it turns out they actually are going to go for the reflect. So you don't often really see Gallades going for screens, and that's actually kind of interesting. So I take this opportunity to get that Stealth Rock up here, and again, I really don't mind this matchup. I figure they probably switch out here, and I can try to get a Volt Switch and a nice little bit of momentum. However, they actually end up going for the Sword Stance. So Sharp Boy is extra sharp, and uh, that's actually interesting. The Sword Stance behind the Reflect, I do get the Pivot off, and now I can go into whatever I like. So. I decide, you know, I kind of just need to nuke this thing. I also can't go into a physical attacker, so it's looking like Triangle is going to be my best option here because I know that I'm going to be able to outspeed this thing, and I should be able to knock this thing out with a Chloroblast. I go ahead and blast him. It turns out this thing has to be running some type of HP bulk because it actually lives. But luckily for us, they actually end up going for a second Swords Dance. They probably thought that I wasn't choice specs, go for something like a Thunderbolt. They could maybe take two considering they're probably... You know, have some type of special bulk because Chloroblast with the choice specs definitely kills uh, most Gallade, even if they're at full health. So that's actually kind of crazy, and I don't know what the hell is going on. I do know that I, I cannot stay in and go for a second Chloroblast because uh, you do take 50% there. So I decide to switch back into Fortress, who I know, you know, forces a contact move, and then all of a sudden, boom, spiky helmet to the fist, and that is going to be able to take care of it with that rocky helmet chip, uh, which is super nice. Now, what is not nice, however, is that this allows an opportunity for them to switch into the Chandelure. So, of course, you know, Fortress, I don't really have much that wants to switch into this, and uh, I just decide to kind of let this thing go down. I was at least able to neutralize the Gallade threat. I got my Stealth Rock up, so I'm feeling pretty good about that, because now this allows me to switch into whatever I want against, you know, the Chandelure here. So I'm thinking, you know, Umbreon actually has a pretty solid opportunity now that Gallade is gone to try to potentially set up. Now, of course, I am working with a physical attacking curse uh, Umbreon here who is uh, max HP and attack and is here to catch people off guard and be more of a physical sweeper. So, of course the Chandelure does not want to stay in against me and I decide to take this opportunity to set up a curse as they're actually going to end up switching into the Vicavolt. And this thing is kind of the only other answer they have to the Umbreon, but it seems like I'm probably going to have to go ahead and commit the Terra here. So the Bug Buzz is something that uh, Umbreon obviously does not want to take. However, I am working with the Terra Fairy. I can put the heart on my head, no longer die to a Bug Buzz, and then chop his ass right in the throat. Now, the interesting thing about the Vicavolt is that, of course, this does have access to Sticky Web. And now that I've lost my Fortress, I'm not going to be able to rapid spin that away. And Sticky Web is actually pretty bad for my team. So I go for the Terra Fairy just on the chance that they do go for that Bug Buzz. Uh, but they do instead just lay down uh, some webs on my side. So I'm going to have to deal with things being real slow. Uh, but luckily I do actually have some stuff that's naturally fast. And even with the sticky web should potentially still be okay. So uh, the throat chop does a nice little chunk there. This forces them to go for the thunderbolt for some a little bit of damage here. Uh, but I chop his ass right in half. And the uh, second throat chop is going to finish off the Vicavolt. So, that thing's out of the way. Sadly, however, it did get up its sticky web, which is the most important thing it could have done. Uh, but at this point, I now have <laughs> plus one attack and defense Umbreon with a damn heart on my head. And I'm feeling like a goofball over here. So, this now allows them to switch into whatever they like. They decide to go into the King Gambit. This thing is an absolute problem, mostly because in this situation, either they Swords Dance or they Iron Head. I decide... 
You know, they Swords Dance twice with Gallade. Maybe they go for an SD here. I can get up a Curse. Allow me to live uh, an Iron Head. Uh, however, they just go for the Iron Head. I do actually live, but it does flinch me. So it doesn't really matter because I was going to Curse anyway. Uh, and at this point, see, Umbreon is going to have to go down to an Iron Head as I don't really want to switch anything into this. And this Black Kitty is about slow as hell. So I do unfortunately burn my Terra here, which is kind of uh, quite unfortunate. But uh, at least now I can figure out what I want to do against this King Gambit. The answer is, I don't really have a whole lot to deal with this thing, but what I do have is my second weird Pokemon who's not supposed to be a sweeper, which is, of course, the Milotic. So I bring this thing in, I do get caught in the sticky web, uh, which is unfortunate. However, what I can do is go for the Hypnosis. Now, they actually decide to go for the Sucker Punch to try to get some nice solid stab damage. However, I do, and uh, luckily for me, hit the Hypnosis. I've actually, I, so I, I feel like I've used up all my luck on hypnosis lately I've been hitting like every one of them and I'm honestly that's fine I feel like part of it is because when you're holding the blunder policy item I swear to god the game just doesn't let you miss stuff so I land the hypnosis there and it's important to note that thing does not burn a turn of sleep so when that thing comes back later it's gonna have to stay asleep for at least one turn so uh, I take this opportunity to go for a dragon dance because I'm like alright I've made it this far I might as well <laughs> go for the dragon dance my Lodic. I'm not gonna be able to do much without it uh, and especially against something like the Metagross here. So, at least with the Dragon Dance, it is going to allow me to outspeed this thing. So, I go for the Waterfall. It does a little bit of a chunk. And sadly, the Psychic Fangs does over half to me. Now, I consider going into the Weavile there. Uh, but the bad news is, if they make the prediction in, the, in me going into the Dark type and go for something like a Meteor Mash, I just uh, am put way behind. So, I decide to go for the Waterfall, potentially roll something like a Flinch. It does not happen. And down goes my Milotic. So listen, I'm running out of options out here. The team is definitely getting beat the hell up. But what I do have is Weavile, who even with the Bullet Punch, I should be able to take at least one of them. I can then finish this thing off with the knockoff. Um, and uh, even with you know with the Stick of them, I'm still actually pretty quick here. I do still outspeed uh, the Metagross here. They don't Bullet Punch, which is amazing. And down goes the Metagross. So we knock off its Assault Vest. No more stylish vest for you, my friend. And uh, I do take some Life Orb Chip. So, Weavile is looking pretty important for me in this matchup. Mostly just because uh, they do have a threat in the Gliscor. And this is kind of the only thing I really have for it. So, they decide to take this opportunity to go into the Chandelure. And this is bad. Again, I need the Weavile to be able to neutralize that Gliscor. So, I decide, you know, maybe there's a chance they likely go for the Flamethrower here. I can then bring in Haxorus. And he kind of put it on a potential roll for if Shadow Ball then kills me. This is where you know, the Sticky Web is wildly unfortunate. So you know, I bring in the Haxorus, and this is when it would be really nice if this was like a uh, like a Scarf Chandler that go for that Flamethrower. Uh, of course, it doesn't do a whole lot to me, but it's actually pretty close to the range where you know, Shadow Ball is not going to look great. So they have, do, of course, outspeed because my shit's all caught up in a web, and a critical hit does knock me out. So down goes the Haxorus, which uh, is unfortunate. However... This now allows me to switch back into the Electrode. And here's where this thing's natural speed uh, is actually pretty crazy. Because uh, even at minus one, we get caught in the sticky web. I don't have any legs. I don't know how a ball gets caught in the sticky web. I can just roll my ass out of there. But nonetheless, I'm at minus one speed. So I can go for the Thunderbolt at least. I do still outspeed because this ball rolls quick as shit. And that is going to take care of the Chandelure. So that's actually a pretty big threat out of the way. And uh, now they decide to go into our arch nemesis, the freaking Gliscor. So, obviously, being locked into the Thunderbolt here, I am forced to switch. And it's kind of looking like, you know, the Electrode is going to be my win condition if somehow we can pull this back. So, I'm kind of expecting, like, an Earthquake here. And I'm also thinking, you know, maybe Weavile actually lives one of these. Considering there's no Stealth Rock up, I'm nearly at full. And there is a chance, kind of depending... A lot depends on how this Gliscor is built. So, I come in, exert some pressure just to ball on him, and it turns out they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra. Now, immediately when I see this, I'm thinking, as long as this isn't ground Terra, Electrode has a chance now. It turns out they're actually going to go for uh, the Terra Flying, which is uh, probably just to boost their Flying Stab, whatever they're going to go for. It turns out it is going to be the Dual Wing Beat. So, with the Flying Terra, it actually, with the two hits, is not quite going to be enough. To knock out the Weavile. And here's where I have kind of an interesting decision. So, their final two Pokemon is going to be the Gliscor along with the King Gambit. And keep in mind, King Gambit is asleep for at least guaranteed one turn. So, I can do a few things here. I decide to go for the Icicle Crash, uh, mostly just because 
a, I could have ice sharded. It's not quite gonna be able to knock out that thing, but if it wasn't running max speed, I actually outspeed and then get off the icicle crash. So it was worth it for me to try to, you know, roll for the chance that I'm faster there. Uh, sadly, I'm not, but the reason why it doesn't really matter is because Electrode is definitely faster and a Choice Specs Thunderbolt uh, with the Flying Terra is gonna be able to knock this thing out. So actually extremely clutch for me that they decided to go for that Flying Terra because now Electrode comes in, I can Thunderbolt and uh, even at full HP with that Specs, it is gonna knock out the Gliscor. So it's actually hilarious to knock out a Gliscor with a Thunderbolt uh, and that actually was very beneficial with that Flying Terra. So. Their final Pokemon is, of course, King Gambit. Now, also, like every King Gambit, we know this thing has Sucker Punch, and it has to at least burn one turn of sleep. So, it gains some strength from the Fallen while he's asleep, and at this point, all I can do is just try to knock it out with Thunderbolt. It's gonna definitely be a two-hit KO. They burn their guaranteed turn of sleep here, and I'm thinking, okay, it definitely doesn't quite knock this thing out. I actually get very close with a critical hit. And now, it all comes down to, if this thing wakes up, and gets the Sucker Punch off, I lose, it stays asleep, and a Thunderbolt is gonna be able to win us the game, but they are not too happy about that. They actually end up straight up disconnecting, they turn their switch off, uh, but luckily, however, we get to see the animation of the Thunderbolt finishing it off, so that was extremely clutch. Electrode comes in and is able to finish the game, thank God for that hypnosis earlier, and that was an insane game, but it doesn't quite stop there because I do have a second battle for you guys. And listen, if you do enjoy these battles where I put two in them, make sure to leave a like on the video. It really does help out the channel. And uh, my dude has a very scary team over here. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this time I've got myself a bit of a different team and my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with Jimmy. I'm, I always really enjoy when people have names, but it's just, that's just Jimmy. It's just a nickname that's just, he's just a guy. Anyway. So this Regirock is here for two reasons, to set up Stealth Rock first of all, but also if I knock, get knocked low enough to the point where my Custap Berry can allow me to move first, I can then explode. But they decide to go for the Volt Switch, it does a nice little chunk, and they actually decide to switch into uh, the Excadrill. And I'm going to go ahead and hip thrust some Stealth Rock onto the field, which is amazing, immaculate Stealth Rock setting form with the hip thrust there, and uh, at this point this Excadrill is actually a pretty big problem. It can either rapid spin, it could go for an earthquake, it could set up stealth rock of its own, and I need to figure out an answer for this thing because it's kind of a pain in my ass. So I do decide to switch out the Regirock. I'm thinking potentially I could try to explode on something later. And also I know that uh, Pissimian is in a spot where I can take any attack from this thing. An earthquake does a whole lot, and Iron Head does less than half, which is amazing. And at this point I'm thinking they probably do not want to stay in here against my uh, crazy monkey boy. So they're actually gonna end up bringing in the Hash Sling and Slasher on the predicted close combat. However, this allows me a nice little spot to go for the U-turn. We'll also notice uh, that this guy's got some sweet boots on because it did not take any Stealth Rock chip. Uh, and that's actually is good to know. So at this point I can go into Tauros and Tauros is in a spot where I'm actually base 110 speed with a Jolly Nature where this thing has had like a max of 105. So I actually do outspeed this thing I can then go for that rock slide, and uh, that is going to take this dude out. I don't care what kind of boots you got on, uh, the four times effective rock slide definitely takes care of the Scyther, and that's actually a pretty big threat out of the way. So, now they decide to go right back into the Excadrill, and this, and, this is why people sleep on Tauros, for real. They don't know the absolute power that Tauros possesses. I can go for the Earthquake here, I do outspeed, and here's the thing, with that Life Orb, I'm actually just barely able to grab the kill there. And the Life Orb is important because without that extra damage, it does in fact live. Uh, since it wasn't a move that has a secondary effect, I do take the chip from the, the Life Orb, but uh, it's a small price to pay because listen, that, uh, that Excadrill is actually a pretty big problem. So, now they decide to go into the Rotom Wash. Listen, I hate Rotom Wash with a damn passion. This thing always just sticks around way longer than you want it to and he's just, just an overall asshole. So, I decide to switch into the Electrode. I'm thinking they likely go for that Will-O-Wisp. It does actually end up happening, but they miss, which is fine, it doesn't really matter because uh, Electrode is, he doesn't care about that anyway. But I actually expect them to kind of expect something like the Leaf Storm, which does kill this thing. However, my Volt Switch lands on the washing machine and uh, it also knocks it into Citrus Berry range, which kind of sucks because it was gonna be really great to have that thing around half. Uh, but at least we were able to kind of burn the Citrus Berry. So, uh, now I'm forced to switch and I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna go into Regirock here. This thing kinda doesn't really do a whole lot in this matchup, uh, but what it does do is it comes in and takes a fucking Confuse Ray. This is why 
We hate the Rotom Wash, dude. It's always so annoying. Uh, at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna force it to try to have to land a Hydro Pump. It does, of course, and also gets a crit just to throw some salt in the wound. Doesn't really matter if there's a crit, but uh, it does land the Hydro Pump. Down goes the Regirock, and uh, it kind of sucks. At least, however, this is going to allow me a free switch. I decide to bring in the Sharpoon, and Veluza is such a fun Pokemon. It actually has a perfect opportunity to try to get something going against this Rotom specifically. Knowing that they have both Confuse Ray and Will-O-Wisp, I decide to go for the Substitute, which is going to block any of those moves. They do decide to go for the Will-O-Wisp, and now we are in peak sushi form, baby. I can now go for the filet away, and uh, behind the Substitute, they're going to have to go for something like a T-Bolt, uh, or a Bolt Switch, whatever their final move slot is. Uh, I go for that filet away, gives us a nice little boost to attack and speed, and uh, we are actually feeling pretty good with this Veluza at this point. I'm honestly, uh, Veluza, if you can just get that substitute up, it's in such a nice position in honestly a lot of games. So I, of course, do knock myself down to my own Citrus Berry. I say, hey, bitch, if you got one, I got one too. So they go for the Bolt Switch here. Uh, it is going to switch out the Rotom, but more importantly, does get rid of the substitute. Uh, however, whatever they decide to bring in is going to have to face the Wrath of a fish that is willing to cut his ass in half. So, uh, they actually end up switching into the Salamence here, and that is mostly just because the thing can come in. While it does take the Stealth Rock chip, which is really nice, it also has the Intimidate. And that's just gonna bring me up to, or down to plus one attack, so I'm still feeling like I'm just gonna go for that Psycho Cut. Uh, it likely doesn't kill here, but again, it's a really high crit chance. So, it, Psycho Cut is never a, a bad time. I cut myself, and then I cut you. That's what this Veluza does, baby. But uh, they actually decide to go right back into the Rotom Wash. That's mostly, probably, I assume, just because they can now uh, bring back in the Salamence to intimidate me again, get rid of my whole Filet away, and ruin my Filet day. So, Rotom being gone is fantastic. However, this now allows them to switch into the Sinistra, which I kind of forget how damn physically defensive this thing is. It is able to easily live the Psycho Cut, and sadly for us, this can now allow them to go for the, uh, the Strength Sap, which... Not only drops my attack one stage, but does in fact heal them all the way back to full, and uh, the fish is having a bad time. So I just decided to go for another cut because I'm a psycho. Tried to roll the crit, does not happen, and they do finish me off with the Macha Gacha. Such an annoying move. Not only can it burn you, but also it heals them. Uh, Sinistra is just an absolute menace, and I need to figure out what the hell I'm going to do to this thing. So... Veluza, he gets his sweep stopped short, but I mean, that's fine. It's kind of to be expected, and at least we're able to kind of see it, what their resources are for that. But I do have one good answer to this, and that is going to be with the Mimikyu. It's kind of a risky maneuver just because of the fact that Machigacha has that chance for the burn, but I really, I don't have much else to do to this thing, and I kind of cannot sword stance here. I decide just to go for that Shadow Claw. I actually end up getting a critical hit with that, but it is able to hang on because... This thing is extremely defensive, but it actually ends up missing the Macha Gacha, which I also kind of forget that that even has a chance to miss, which is actually amazing because now we are faster, and a Shadow Claw is going to be able to finish this thing off, but also uh, the Mimikyu does in fact still maintain that disguise, so they're going to have to at least touch me once uh, before being able to do any damage to me. So this brings back in Jimmy. He's, uh, he's nice and shiny. And Jimmy's just over here, just got his little spinnies going, and I'm thinking, hmm, I don't really have anything to touch this thing with. But also I realize his Hisuian Electrode actually has kind of a weird uh, little situation against this to where it cannot really do anything to me, and I'm actually going to be able to do more to it. So I'm thinking, you know, I go into Electrode here uh, as, unfortunately, they actually go for the Volt Switch. But their best answer to take attacks from Electrode is going to be... Uh, that Magnezone. So I'm thinking that's actually kind of fine. It draws in the Salamence, who, of course, comes in, takes that Stealth Rock chip, which is great. It actually puts it in range to where a Thunderbolt now kills. And I'm thinking, okay, I just stay in here and just spam some Specs T-Bolts and have a, a pretty decent time, where they have to go back into the Magnezone. That's just because this is the only mod that can take attacks from the Hisuian Electrode. But again, this thing really cannot touch me either. So I'm kind of in a position here where I don't really have a reason to switch. It's looking like a few more Thunderbolts are going to take care of it. And they realize they actually, you know, they cannot knock me out either. So they're actually going to go ahead and commit the Terra of their own. They go Terra Ice, where a Terra Blast now knocks me out. But sadly for them, uh, I've got this thing into range, where uh, now that they've changed their type, a Choice Specs T-Bolt is going to be able to take care of the Magnezone. 
And that was just kind of a weird, I kind of put their back against the wall there, where they needed to Terra to be able to knock me out, but it in turn allows me to knock them out, and Hisalian Electro is just rolling around in victory out here, because the final Pokemon is going to be that Salamence, and the Stealth Rock has done exactly what we needed it to do in uh, getting all the chip. And it's definitely in range to where a T-Bolt for sure knocks this thing out. So Electrode with his pure speed rolling around all over the damn battlefield knocking shit out is going to finish off the game for us. And uh, that is going to do it. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed these battles. I had a lot of fun with them. And uh, let me know what you thought. Leave a comment if you have any specific mons you'd like to see me use in the future. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.